All right. Um, so on this problem, ladies and gentlemen, what we have discussed now, when we did our when we did the problem, our notes, what we discussed was using linear equations, right? And it was, so it's pretty basic, um, you know, how we're going to go and figure those out. But now what we're going to be doing is, obviously, you guys can see here is exponential equations. But it, the process is going to be exactly the same. And if you guys wrote down the process in our notes, you'd have that written down that the first thing you want to do is solve for t by using one of the equations. Now, since we're graphing these with um, y, I'm going to want to solve this equation in for t, the x, so that I can plug it into y, and then I can plug in my calculator. So to solve this for x, I have x equals e to the negative t. Now, Without using logarithms, all right, I'm just going to rewrite this and solve for t, and I'm going to plug that one back in without having to deal with uh, the logs initially. So to do that, to solve for x, I can rewrite this as 1 over e to the t. I need to solve for x, so I'll multiply e to the t on both sides to get it off the denominator. Then I have e to the t times x equals 1, um, divide by x. And I have e to the t equals 1 over x. The reason why I'm going to leave it as e to the t and not use the logarithm, um, because I want to be able to evaluate um, when I can plug in e to the t. I notice that in this equation, I can plug in e to the t rather than just plugging in the t, like putting in a logarithm up there. So I can evaluate for e to the t right into this equation. So to do that, I rewrite y equals e to the 3t. To rewrite this in e, in, um, as e to the t, I can rewrite this as e to the t times 3. And all, so by transforming it, by rewriting it this way, I can easily see that I can plug in e to the t as 1 over x. So therefore, I have y equals 1 over x cubed. To simplify that, I have y equals um, 1 over x cubed. Now, the next step was to go ahead and graph this. All right. So you guys can simply just plug in your calculator, make sure you're in function notation, and 1 divided by x cubed. Now, if we had already gone over our previous chapter 2, I would have expected you guys to know how to graph this, even though you did learn it in Algebra 2. Um, we are going to be actually going over graphing rational expressions next, which I know doesn't really make too much sense. Um, but that's what we'll be doing. So when you guys go and graph this, you see a graph that looks something like this. All right. So I would expect to have a graph that's looking at this. But we have to be very careful with something. Because what we have here is we have this graph. And then we have this other graph right here. It's the reciprocal function that uh, uh, when we eliminate the parameter, that's what it produces. The problem is, is this is not a part of our graph. Why? Well, again, think about it, guys. Remember, if you take any number, forget e. If you take any number and raise it to a power, when we talked about exponential functions, if you take any number and raise it to a number x, and I don't care if x is a fraction, I don't care if it's irrational, I don't care if it's negative, anything, is it possible to take 5, raise it to a number, and get something that is negative? No, it's impossible, right? y can never, ever be negative. You cannot raise 5 to a, any number and make it negative. All right. So therefore, these x and y, x has to be greater than 0, y has to be greater than 0. So therefore, your graph is only going to be this part of the reciprocal function. OK? And that's how you have answers. Any questions on that in general in my process? OK. Now, as far as eliminating